I don't know. You know, but the reality is, is I think you see it through the player's eyes first, and then you go from there because you can't, you can't force someone to do something they're not capable of. You can't take a, you know, fullback and say, hey, we want you to be a matchup guy and a linebacker. You know, things like that that you just have to work through. Aha! Aha! Putting hogs on the mind, planting purple seeds. Baltimore Ravens coat, purple trim, big body, old school for low. Purple rim, seven seven cutty, black with All the right, purple so strip. They asked Todd Munkin about Lamar. Like, what do we, what do we see? Um, you know, for his skill, and he said it. Lamar's skill set is elite. Which we all know. I'm wondering if the Ravens know that though. You know what I'm saying? Get him in his money. But we all know Lamar is uh, elite. You know what I'm saying? And and he also gave credit to uh, just the way Lamar, you know, plays football, the the work he does and everything like that, with the, the breakdown of the plays and the backyard football. He also gave uh, his passing, his passing credit. Um, just in just in that, just the just the fact that he believes <clears throat> Lamar is a passer and not a running back, like the old offensive coordinator showed. So hopefully Lamar is not going to be running up no middle, no run plays designed for Lamar. He will be passing that ball, and I believe he will be passing that ball. Because, well, here's the clip. You know, that's hard because, um, first of all, when I first started watching film, first of all, you know, there's a transition because Lamar has been here for a while, you know, and the roster changes around players and injuries add to that. And I first started watching and I'm like, wow, they do, like, they do really good stuff in the run game. Like, holy cow, that, that is very creative. And at first I was watching it going, I have no idea of why they want me there. Like, I don't know what I'm going to be able to be better at, truly. You know, I was like, wow, they did some really good things. And, um, you know, as you continue to watch and, you know, players dictate style of play. They do. Players around the quarterback dictate a style of play. There's no way around it. When I was at Tampa, we had really good receivers. We had Deshaun, we had Mike Evans, we had Chris Godwin, we had Adam Humphreys, and we had O.J. Howard, and we had Cam Brate, and we had quarterbacks that loved to throw it sometimes to the other team, but they liked to throw it. But the reality is we were much better throwing it. So that's what you, right, that's where you play to, the strengths of who you have, right? We had to be good throwing it. Uh, we weren't nearly as adept running it. And we, I, needed, I needed to do a better job probably scheming it. Okay, so then you get into somewhere where you start losing some of your perimeter players. It's still about winning. So it's hard to judge because you don't know the roster. Does that make sense? Like, you, why are they doing the things they're doing offensively? Because it's still about winning. You have to do the things that give you the best chance to win every week. Um, but I do think that being able to use, I think players want to play in a game that spaces the field. I think when you go into an install meeting, all of your skilled players want to say, where are my opportunities coming? Where am I going to get a chance to touch the football and showcase my ability? And I think the more you're able to do that and utilize that, because to me, balance isn't run pass. Balance is make them cover all five of your guys, make them defend the field, make them defend, you know, the depth of the field. So I think it's all of those things, easier said than done sometimes, based on personnel. But I think that's where players want to play. They see themselves in that. The game has gone that way. That's the way the college game has gone. That's what they're used to. They're not used to anymore being under center five-step drop. That doesn't exist. They're used to being in gun, RPOs, spreading the field, using space players. That's what they're used to. So I think that's the style they want to play. And so if you said, yeah, is that who we're going to be? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I think that's got to be a part of what you do. When Todd Munkin said that, great plays for players that stand out. Okay, and they asked him about, you know, Isaiah Likely and Mandrews, which he already know Mandrews a little sort of. He gave a little, he, little story about when Mandrews was like 16 or something like that in high school catching the football. You had two really good tight ends at Georgia this past year. You, you walk in now with Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely. Specifically with Isaiah Likely, how do you feel like you can help take his game to the next level? Oh, I, I don't, 
you know, um, <clears throat> we became that because they were two of our best players. And of course, that pissed off every slot we had. So that's just the way this works, right? Okay, you're 11 personnel, your tight ends are mad. You're in 21 personnel. It's just the way this goes. I get it. You know, everybody wants to play. I mean, I get it. Well, our, two of our best players were those guys. Luckily, our slots were very um, team oriented. They were great kids. They understood that. Some of our best leaders, they didn't get the opportunities they wanted. But ultimately, they were paid to score, move the football. They were two of our best players. That'll, that always plays itself out. Um, but he um, he's gonna be looking. Uh, he he's looking for a player. The best players will get the ball the most. Pretty much that's what he was saying. Like um, Tampa Bay, you know uh, Evans and oh, the other wide receiver, and then Georgia. The best people on that on that team was um, you know the tight ends. The Browns, the best people on that team was the wide receivers. It, everything was just balanced out. Now, for us, the Ravens, we got J.K. that can cook. We're going to see what happens with the wide receivers, but we know we got Mandrews, and we got Isaiah Likely. Hopefully, he has an even more coming out party. So, But he, um, he said he looks for matchups. He looks for matchups. So he's not going to be uh, throwing a little, uh, well, he did throw a little jab at Greg Roman. He's not going to be, what did he say, what did he say? Um, I'm not going to put a fullback on a, 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 a linebacker or something like that. And I was like, huh, he could be gone. Pat Ricard could be gone. They're going to be cleaning the house now. I just wonder how they're going to do it. But it's going to be really interesting to just to see how he scheme up everything with Lamar. And before I end this video, they asked him about OBJ. He gave OBJ, look, here you go. Uh, your impression of Odell Beckham? Can I, I don't even know the rules. Can I speak on it? Oh, so that I can speak on it. You can't speak on a guy that's under contract, right? Okay. I really like Odell. Odell, super athletic, twitchy, really likes football. I mean, I really did. You know, it didn't work out the year I was there, but ultimately, he's like every skilled player. He's no different. I don't know why everybody gets pissed off. Like, he wants the ball. Well, really? Like, I don't know where I've been where a great player didn't want the ball. I didn't know where a basketball player didn't want shots or a baseball player didn't want to get bat bats. That's what they want. They want opportunities to showcase their ability. I think it's awesome. I think he's tremendously skilled, and, and I like his personality. He likes to compete. He has a tough deal, though, because he's a, he, in my opinion, and he may think differently, and he may, you know, it's like, it's tough being a, um, a face. Does that make sense? Like NBA deals with all the time, but there's very few NFL players outside of quarterbacks that they really know their face, that they're a, they're a market. They're, and he's that way, and I think that makes it hard, you know, at times when you're under the microscope like he is. It really is hard. But I, I liked Odell a lot, liked his skill set, liked his work ethic. He fought through an injury. Tremendous. He gave OB. Uh, you've worked with a lot of different quarterbacks. How would you describe the skill set you would have to work with? with what was that? He gave OBJ so much praise. It's like. Man, now D Hop is on the market. OBJ is a free agent. I know they can't get both. Can they even get one? But I, I would love that. I would love that. And you know, OBJ already had um, tied as an offensive coordinator, so that's a plus. It's cool with well, you know, a lot of. Them players are cool with each other, but, you know, Bateman looked up to him. Um, Lamar, everybody's cool with Lamar. But, you know, just that that, that in itself is interesting. I, I just can't wait. So, overall, the Todd Munkin, um, man, uh, I love I loved the press conference. If, he he talked so good, man. If he was trying to sell me a car, I would have probably bought two. That, that, that man was – he was cooking. He was, he was cooking. Throwing jabs here and there. 
talking about, you know, uh, Winston, Jameis Winston, you know, the game, the break the two, the passing, because that's what they did best. And sometimes they passed it to the, the other team. When he said that, man, that joke was funny. But, yeah, it's, um, um, yeah, I just, I, sh yeah, that's, that, man, he, he was cooking, he was cooking. But, yeah, so tell me what y'all think about it. Um, put it in the comments. Um, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the share. Everybody stay safe. God bless.